I recommend everybody um, have something to hydrate with. And if you have like a couch pillow like this um, and or a block of any size, I would grab that too. I recommend getting comfortable here at the beginning. So if you have a chair that you want to sit on or your couch or a like a firm pillow, or your block, you could just sit in crisscross applesauce. I probably won't sit like that for very long because it bothers my tailbone, but for the time being, I will. If you are somewhere that you are not on like a hardwood floor or a linoleum, um, you may find that your mat moves around a lot and it's pretty annoying. But this is the only room in our house I can film in. And just because of um, all my joint pain, I like to have um, a squishier surface to do yoga on anyway. So let's go ahead and sit up nice and tall. And just begin to breathe in and out through your nose. And you're welcome to close your eyes, but you don't have to. If you would rather not, I just recommend you find a spot somewhere in your house, something that's not moving. Just gaze at that and let your vision sort of blur. This way we can focus on the breath coming in and out through the nose, starting to slow down the breath. And let's imagine that we're filling our lungs with air like you would fill a glass of water. So inhale, use the diaphragm, expand the belly, then the ribs, and finally lift the heart. Take a pause and exhale all the air out through the nose. Meter it out nice and slow. And as usual, let's make sure we feel as tall as we can be from our waist up. We've really lengthened up the spine. But the shoulders are going to be relaxed. The jaw is relaxed, but the mouth is closed. And bring the tongue off the roof of the mouth. You can really feel the air coming in and out that way. And maybe give a little extra tug on your shoulder blades. Pull them together a bit behind you. Allow the heart to lift more. Just helps us breathe a little deeper. And on the next inhale, let's come up a little extra tall. Exhale, allow the right ear to drop down towards the shoulder. Let's keep our shoulders relaxed and our heart lifted. Nod your head forward gently if you need to. Drop that left hand down to the mat if you need to. We're just going to gently open the side of the neck and the shoulder here to begin. On your next inhale, come on up. Exhale over to the other side, and you may find that one side is a lot easier than the other. This I thought the other side felt bad, but this side feels worse, so I've clearly been at the computer <laughs> a lot this week editing yoga videos. So let's nod our head forward if we need to, and or drop that right hand down to the mat.
Good. Next inhale, come on up. You may, if you're on a block, you may need to move it now. We're going to inhale and just exhale, drape the right arm over the front of the body. It's My arm's a little in front of my face right now. Just allowing the side body to open a bit. Really send the breath into that left lung. Let it expand. Let the ribs pull away from each other. And let that begin to open the side body more than your pushing into the stretch. The stretch is just naturally happening here. And if you want to rotate open, you can take your arm a bit behind your head. Rotate the torso up towards the ceiling a bit. Look wherever is comfortable. You don't have to look up. Good. Next inhale, let's come up. Exhale, drape the right arm over. It's a little in front of my face. And again, we're breathing into that right lung. Let the expansion of the lung begin to open the side body. The arm is just sort of hanging there. We're not pushing the shoulder out yet. We will have time for that later when we're more warmed up. And if you want to open up towards the sky a bit, take your arm behind you. Look wherever is comfortable. Continuing to breathe. Good. Next inhale, let's come on up. And so now if we're sitting on anything, we should probably take it away so that we can fold correctly. So on the forward fold, you, you can stay where you are. I'm going to turn to the side so you can see what I'm getting at here. We're going to hinge at the waist and try not to round our back over when we fold. So we're gonna inhale tall, relax the shoulders, exhale, I'm fold down until I meet resistance, and then I'm just gonna drop my hands and roll my tailbone a bit under me. So here I'm trying to keep the neck in line with the spine, like not dropping it down, not throwing it back. I wanna activate the muscles on the back of my neck. And actually, folding with this flat back like hinging helps us work all the muscles in the back and the back of the neck. Because when we round over, we hang our weight off our low back. And that's really intense to go into like right away when we're not warmed up. That's one of the last poses that we'll do when we're nice and warm. And next inhale, nice and big. Exhale, let's walk our hands over to the left. You can take a little weight off your right hip, that's fine. It doesn't matter. Don't force it down. We don't want to injure your SI joint, which is like there's one on either side of your tailbone basically, and they're really mobile, especially in women. So if you're ever in a yoga class and someone tells you to like put your hip down when you're twisting, just ignore them. On the inhale, let's walk through the middle. Exhale, walk it over to the right. And again, if some weight comes off your left hip, don't worry about it. Good. Next inhale, let's come on up. Exhale, we're just going to walk the arms back, open the heart up towards the sky, looking up a little bit if we can. If you need to stretch your feet out now, that's fine. It's a long time to have sat in pretzel. Push the heart towards the sky, push the shoulders down a bit. If the muscles in your neck start to hurt after a little bit or ache, just tuck your chin for a breath or two and then come back into it. Those muscles are not used very much because we're always sitting, we're always on our phones, we're always in the car, and they just get weak 
really quickly and this will help strengthen them back up and improve our posture and help with general neck and back pain. If your jaw hurts, then just tuck your chin. The heart can still stay lifted. You can still stretch the chest and the arms out. Good, so let's inhale and walk it forward. And if you don't mind, we're gonna return to pretzel just for a tiny twist. So let's take our right shin along the ground like this. Left foot is somewhere out in front here. It'll move around as we do this. And we're gonna do a couple little twists. So let's inhale nice and tall. Try to keep this knee dropped down. It wants to creep up in this pose, at least on me it does. So let's inhale tall. Exhale, we're gonna to twist to the right first. Use your body and the floor if you want a little bit of leverage. But keep in mind, again, we're just warming up, so it's a tiny twist. We will do very big twists at the end, because that's the best part. Look out over that back shoulder now, if it's comfortable for your neck, but if it's not, don't worry about it. We're just gonna breathe, and incrementally, maybe even a millimeter at a time, just add to this twist. Next inhale, come on through the middle. Exhale, let's go to the other side. It'll be a little bit more difficult probably. That's okay. Just keep that knee down and rotate from the bottom of the spine up. And the last thing to move is the neck. So you can look out over your back shoulder if it's comfortable. If not, look wherever works for you today. The twist is still happening in the torso regardless. Next inhale, let's come on back. Now we're gonna switch. So now my left shin is on the ground. Right foot is somewhere out in the front. Get the tailbone under the neck so we're up nice and tall. Big inhale, exhale, let's rotate to the left again because that's the easier one. Let's start with the easier one. Get warmed up. Try to keep this knee relaxed. Easier said than done for me. Looking out over that back shoulder now, if it's comfortable. Not so comfortable for me today. Continuing to breathe. And on the next inhale, we come through the middle. Exhale, other side. Tiny twist to the right. And now look out over that back shoulder if it's comfortable. Not for me. But that's all right. Good. So on the next inhale, we're gonna come back to center and we're gonna go into our tabletop. So if you have a wrist injury, you have a couple options here. Also, if you have problems with your knees and you're not on a squishy surface like me, I would recommend you just do an accordion fold on your mat like this. So I actually have three layers now for my knees to be on, which is really helpful if you're on a hardwood floor or something like that, and you only have one mat. For the wrists, they're either stacked right under your shoulders or if your wrist bother you and you want to come up on your fists, that's fine. Or you can take one step forward with your hands. All right. Knees are right under our hips. I'm going to stay on camera here for you. I'm going to crawl right off camera. All right. So let's go into cat-cow now. On the inhale, push the belly towards the floor. Lift up and out a bit with the ears. Exhale, drop your head, release the neck, arch the back, bring the forehead towards the thighs. This is cat. 
Inhale, belly down, ears out. Exhale, drop the head, arch the back, cat. Make sure the neck is released here. All right, let's keep going at our own pace. So we match the movement to the breath. Inhale for cow and exhale for cat. Make it nice and slow. Make it as slow as you can. Really allow the muscles to get warm and, and stretch out a bit, lengthen out, soften up. It's going to be especially difficult if your back bothers you. So you want to really take your time and then you'll probably find that your back feels better after we do a few of these. I have a cramp in my foot. That's why I've got my toes up down. Normally you would want to keep your shoelaces on the mat in this pose. All right, so now let's do a little bit more serious core work and we're gonna really warm up the body now. Um, you may find you get a little out of breath. Don't worry about it. We'll, we'll bring the breath right back down. So let's do our airplane. On the inhale, we're gonna lift our opposite hand and foot off the ground just a little. Doesn't have to be a lot. Exhale and lower. Inhale, lift the other opposite hand and foot. Exhale, lower. Let's keep going at our own pace, nice and slow. Inhaling, lifting, opposite hand and foot. Exhale and lower. Inhaling, opposite hand and foot. And exhale, lower, keep going. Nice and slow. Keep those shoelaces pointing down. We're not rotating the hip at all here. We're actually wanting to work the glute and the hamstring here. So for the next pose, you can either stay here, you could return to cat-cow, or we will have the option to send the airplane out to the side, which you may find uncomfortable if you have a hip or shoulder injury. So take the option that works for you. And we're gonna inhale and lift opposite hand and foot. Once in a while, check in with your tabletop just make sure the shoulders are over the wrists or your modification is still working for you. The knees tend to move all around in this pose, so try to keep them under your hips. Let's do one more round on each side. And when you're ready, we will meet in child's pose. So if you are unfamiliar with child's pose, you basically just sit back towards your heels, stretch your arms overhead and drop your forehead to the floor like this. And then you just release all the tension in your body as best you can. The options that you have here are multiple. So go ahead and go into regular child's pose. So you get the benefit of it, but the most common um, option here is to take the knees out wide and have the feet together. So then you just, you have some more space and you can probably get very comfortable. At least that's the goal. If your forehead does not comfortably reach the floor, put one of your pillows under it or maybe a block. That's a pretty common modification because you want pressure on that third eye area. You can turn your head to one side or the other, or you can wrap your arms behind you. If that hurts your shoulders to reach overhead, just wrap your arms behind you. So lots of different things you can do here. Continue to breathe, send the breath throughout the body. Imagine that you're a little rock in the sun, so you're slowing the breath down to get your heart rate back down, but you're still deliberately breathing nice and big in and out through the nose so that the body stays warm. You're still in child's pose. I'm only sitting up because you won't hear me if my face is on the mat. It doesn't work, I've found. All right, 
Next inhale, let's come back up to tabletop for a moment. And exhale it out. Big inhale, let's walk the hands away. Exhale, we're going to come down onto our forearms. I don't think, there we go, hopefully you can see what I'm doing. Um, elbows under shoulders, pelvis flat on the floor, shoelaces flat on the floor, and then push the heart away from the mat. Activate the low back. If it starts to hurt your low back, that's all right. You can come down like this, and you're still getting the opening. We're trying to open the front of the torso here. Active arms, keep pushing into the elbows, send the weight all the way out to the fingertips. Next inhale, nice and big. Exhale, elbows out, palms together, and you're going to drop your head, so you'll probably need to take your glasses off if you have them. Try to flatten your armpit towards the floor, and then bring those hands towards the back of your neck as much as you want. It'll stretch out your tricep. It typically feels pretty good. under our shoulders. Exhale, peel the chest off the floor. This is baby cobra. Keep those shoelaces on the mat because it protects the low back. The more weight you have in the hands, the easier it will be on your back. So if you want to work the muscles of the back, keep very little weight on the hands. You can add on here by taking your hands back into half locust. So my hands are by my hips now. Or if you want to do full locust, you can take your shoelaces off the mat. Push the shoulders towards the, the feet if you're in full locust. And when you're ready, just relax it down and we'll press back into child's pose one more time. So of all the options, take the one that works for you. It's important though that we just try to relax everything as best we can when we're here. So you stay in child's pose. It's a very restorative pose. It's like a little power nap. So it's the last pose we do before we come into our standing poses. because it sort of re-energizes us. And at any point during the practice, if there's a pose you don't want to do or you need a rest, come on back to child's pose or just hang out until we do another one. Not everybody wants to do every pose. Sometimes you have an injury or something just hurts or you just feel uncomfortable or unsteady today or whatever it may be, that's totally fine. Don't think any less of yourself if you skip a pose. There are plenty of poses I am not doing because I cannot do them today. <laughs> All right, so let's go ahead and press ourselves back into our tabletop. And we're going to come into downward facing dog briefly. This is the only time we're going to put a lot of weight on the hands. So if you want to stay in tabletop, that's fine. Otherwise, we're going to take a step forward with the hands. Big inhale, curl your toes. Exhale, lift your hips towards the sky. Push your heels towards the floor. Release the head. And we're going to open the armpits and push them towards our ankles. Continuing to breathe. This is downward facing dog. 
Ears between the upper arms, no tension in the neck. Pedal the feet out a bit if you want. And on the next inhale, let's look between the hands. Exhale, walk your feet towards your hands until you have to pop into a forward fold. You can use your blocks to steady yourself or a pillow, or you could fold towards your couch or a chair and hold on to it. The important thing here is that I want you to completely release the upper body. No tension in the upper body, especially the neck. Let gravity lengthen the neck for you. And let's put at least half of our weight in our heels since we're getting warmed up. Embrace the big stretch for the hamstrings. Everybody's are tight, so don't be embarrassed. Next inhale, big bend in the knees. We're going to come up super slow so we don't get dizzy. Even people who aren't disabled like me will get dizzy in this pose. So come up slow. Reach. Exhale, hands in front of heart. And it looks like Today we need to do a sun salute. They don't always work, but sometimes they do. So we're going to do one. Let's inhale, arms up, exhale, swan dive slow. Use the low back, flat back down. There we go. Release it down. Now let's put a little more than 50% of our weight in our heel. So I can actually wiggle my toes now. Release the neck. Next inhale, let's come on up, torso parallel to the floor, flat back, just a hair of a bend in the knees, and exhale, fold. Now let's do three quarters of our weight in our heels. You can bend your knees as much as you want, just keep in mind the, the straighter your legs are, the more you're going to engage your hamstrings, but even I keep a soft bend in the knees all the time. I think it's better. Keeps the ligaments and tendons and muscles around the knees active and strong. So let's inhale, big bend in the knees again. Come up nice and slow with a flat back. Hands in front of heart. You did it. You are warmed up, hopefully. So we're going to do some standing poses now. I'm sorry if I'm going too fast. Hopefully you're ready. I'm trying to stall a little bit. So if you are facing the camera, I'm going to cue the actual foot I'm on since I won't be mirroring you. And I'll just turn my body. But you could face the camera the whole time. All right, so let's come to the top third of our mat or so. And I really only have about the width of my fist, that amount of space between my feet. So my legs are parallel to each other. So I'm gonna have a soft bend here. Engage the core, try to pull the, the tailbone down when you engage the middle abs. I always feel like, like where the actual six pack looks on people. Engage those and that kind of helps you tailbone down. And then we'll just inhale the arms out. My arms are just gonna hang with my palms facing forward. So this is Tadasana or mountain pose. And we like to start here just to sort of retrain the spine to counter how much we have to sit and hunch over. Soft knees. Just a little bend in the knees and then lift the heart here. Big inhales and exhales through the nose, nice and slow. All right, so let's inhale, hands in namaste. We're going to come up on our toes. Woo! I, don't worry if you lose your balance because I just did. Exhale, let's take a step back with your left foot and lower those heels down. This is pyramid pose. So we're trying to bring the left hip forward and the right hip back. 
to square the hips to the front of the mat, which may mean you may need to take your stance a little wider. That's fine. If you have wide hips like I do, you need the, your feet to actually be in front of where your hip joints actually are and not close to each other. If this doesn't feel like it's doing much for you, you can inchworm that front foot up and then again pull forward on that left hip. If you want to inhale the arms up, that's fine. If that's uncomfortable, keep them down. Good. On the inhale, let's send the arms up. Exhale, spin to your left. And I'm going to spin my back foot so it's at a 90 degree angle to my front foot. But I'm going to bring both of the feet to the middle of the short side of the mat. So if you drew a line through your front foot, it would bisect the arch of your back foot here. Good. So let's inhale. Got to bring my arms back up. Yours are still probably up. Exhale. Bend the front knee so you only see your big toe. And that's how we know our knee is safe. Check in that your arms are parallel to the floor, more or less. Maybe pull the shoulder blades together a bit behind you. Warrior two. You can take the stance as wide as you want here, depending on how much work you want. If you're trying to get a workout, you can take the stance wider. Good. On the inhale, let's almost straighten that front leg. Keep it a little soft. Exhale. Cartwheel the right arm up towards the sky, left arm wraps around behind you. This is Sky Archer. So now we're deliberately reaching tall. We're really trying to open that side body. Some days this pose does nothing for me. Other days it feels like a huge stretch. So if you don't feel anything today, don't really worry about it. It's still a nice pose for stretching this psoas muscle on the front of the hip. Big inhale. Exhale, legs stay the same, cartwheel just the arms. We're going to grab above or below the kneecap, but not on the kneecap. I'm having a hard time with my low back today, so I'm going to come up above the knee and reach straight towards the sky with your left hand. So we're trying to keep our shoulder, chest, shoulder in line vertically with our leg here and not bend over like this just so we can come down farther on the front leg and feel like we're super bendy. Good. Inhale, let's bend the front knee again until we only see our big toe. Drop the forearm down. Exhale out and over with the right, left arm, sorry, left extended side angle. Now we're going to really open up. So pull the hip and the shoulder away from each other. And you can put as much weight as you want in your front hip as long as your knee is over your ankle. Good. So on our inhale, the legs are going to stay the same. Exhale. Cartwheel your arms back. Tiny back bend if you want. Otherwise, reach straight towards the sky. But when the weight shifts back, you've got to check in with your big toe again. Can you only see the big toe? Continuing to breathe. Good. And on the next inhale, we're going to open into star. So I'm going to turn, but you're still welcome to face the same way. I just want you to see, like, I'm kind of taking a little bit of a back bend, but you can be straight up and down if you want. Soft knees, soft elbows, big inhale, exhale. Let's fold, fold, fold down. Wide-legged forward fold. Use your blocks if you want. If that helps you feel steady so you can focus on the fold, go for it. Never be shy about using props. And again, let's put three-quarters of our weight in our heels and allow the upper body to completely relax. Folds are one of the best things for anxiety and stress because you're sending all that circulation into your head. 
So folds are probably extra good for us these days. I'm going to spin to face you again. We have two options for the next pose. So if you have a ankle, hip, or knee injury, you want to take option one probably. Otherwise, take option two. Option one is just to walk your hands towards your right foot. Bring your torso along your right thigh and then push your hips a little to the left. And then you'll feel the big stretch on the inside of your leg. Option two is to bend that knee send the toes towards the sky and do a runner stretch but try to keep this knee a little buoyant if you're very bendy like me you can just put a block there just so you don't hyperextend. but you can put a lot of weight in your hands and that will keep this ankle safe otherwise i would never tell you to put your knee out over your ankle good so on the inhale we're going to walk through the middle Take option one or two, depending on what you are feeling or not feeling today. Continuing to breathe. Good. So on the next inhale, let's walk to the middle. Actually, I'm going to keep my block here. Uh, we're going to do our Buddha squat. So we're basically a little frog. You can keep your hands on the floor and your heels up. You can even lean forward a bit like you were going to go into crow. Otherwise, you're going to sit back on your heels and bring your hands up. And you can open your hips as much as you want here. You may find you want to sit on your block. You can do this actually sitting on a chair. If you're on a chair, you just lean forward. But if you're pressing your elbows into your knees, make sure you're also pressing your knees into your elbows. You don't want it to be a one-way street. When you do that, you feel the hips engage, but also the upper back engage. I find this to be like one of the most satisfying stretches for the upper back for whatever reason. I love it. Good. So let's inhale, let's shift the weight forward, plant the hands, take the block away if you need to. We're just gonna bring our le uh, legs in like a cannonball. And take your time coming up. <laughs> so big inhale, nice and slow. Woo Exhale, hands in front of heart. Very good, we've done the right side. Let's come up to the top third of the mat again. Remember, feet are not very far apart. We're going to do our Tadasana. So ground the feet, soft knees, engage the six pack to send the tailbone down, and then we exhale. Let the arms just drape, palms forward. Lengthen the spine up. Good. So let's inhale, namaste hands, come up on our toes. Exhale, take a step straight back with your right foot and exhale the heels down. The feet stay parallel to the sides of the mat, remember. So if you need to take a step and widen your stance a bit, go for it. We're gonna pull that right hip forward this time, left hip back. Square the pelvis to the front of the mat. This is pyramid. Again, if you don't feel much in this pose, inchworm that front foot away and push into that right hip. It may be a big stretch for some of you on the back of the front leg. It may be a big stretch for some of you on the front of the right hip or both. It's a really great pose for something that looks simple. It's actually a lot to think about. If you want to add on the arms, go ahead, relax the shoulders, reach to the sky. If you don't like it, bring your hands back down. Next inhale, nice and big. Exhale, spin to your right. And we will bring our feet to the middle of the mat. Again, 
front foot would draw a line and intersect the arch of the back foot. So let's do big inhale, exhale, bend that front knee until you only see your big toe. And then give your arms a check. Hopefully they're more or less parallel. And I forgot to do this before. If you want to do the flip. Flip the hands. Good. Inhale, almost straighten that front leg. Keep it just a little bit. Exhale, reach to the sky with the left hand. Right hand is around the low back. And reach, sky archer. Big reach. Look up if it's comfortable. If not, don't worry about it. Push that pelvis forward a bit. Engage the psoas muscle. Okay, big inhale. Legs stay the same. Exhale, cartwheel just the arms. Grab above or below the kneecap. Reach straight up towards the sky with the right hand. Come up higher on your leg if you find yourself folding forward at all. That's cheating. You don't want to fold just so you can come down and feel very bendy. <laughs> Good. Inhale, bend that front knee so it's right over your ankle. Set the forearm down. Exhale out and over. Reach now. Big reach, biggest reach. Extended side angle. And again, just keep your knee over your ankle and you'll be good. Continuing to breathe. On the inhale, legs stay the same. Exhale, cartwheel the arms back, either straight up towards the sky or the tiny back bend. And then once you've shifted your weight onto that back foot, check in that your front knee is safe. Still breathing through the nose all the time, if we can. Good. Next inhale, we're going to spin right into star. Keep the stance just a hair narrower this time so we can do some squats. So let's do the big reach, tiny back bend if you want. Again, you stay where you are. I'm going to spin just so you can see what's up. So on the next exhale, bend your knees and your elbows. Booty does not stick out. Booty stays under because we're really engaging these quads now. One round of breath. Next inhale, you're going to come up slow. Reach. One round of breath. Next exhale, bend it on down. Pull those shoulder blades together. So much is doing work now. <laughs> Next inhale, come up slow. One round of breath. Next exhale. One more time. How low can you go? Good. And then next inhale, come on up. Exhale, fold it down. Wide legged forward fold. And now in this pose, you can do whatever you want. You can put the weight where you want in the foot. If you like to cross your arms, go for that. Actually, that feels pretty good. I don't normally do that, but that feels pretty good today. You can swing your upper body like a pendulum. You can reach behind you. Do whatever you want in this pose. If you feel like there's something else you need to stretch out, go for it. dizzy. All right, so let's take a big inhale. We're going to heel toe the feet in and exhale so we can just come on down to seated. So graceful. Probably not. All right, um, you may want to have blocks nearby for some of the final poses or, or a pillow. I have a really firm couch pillow that actually works really awesome for some some stuff like when I need to support 
a limb. So you can get creative with it. You don't have to have yoga equipment. All right. We're gonna do one more fold and one more twist and then we'll have our nice relaxation at the end. So let's do Dandasana, the seated mountain pose, as they say. I have cat fur on me, that's why I'm doing this. Okay, so let's inhale big, and then we're gonna give ourselves a little push. So we're tall, very tall. Toes are together, heels are a little bit apart, unless that's uncomfortable. If you need to do something else with your feet, that's fine. Now I'm gonna release my hands and hold that lift in the torso using the strength of my core or lack thereof. Just hold it as tall as you can and then let's inhale the arms up. Exhale, folding down like we did at the beginning. Try to keep the back flat. We're not rounding over yet. So grab onto your legs as far away as you can reach and then give yourself a tug Try to keep the torso as long as it can be, and try to keep the neck in line with the spine. We're not dropping the head yet. Let's do a few more rounds of breath here. Working the whole back. And on your next exhale, go ahead and round it over. You can use your block. To support your head if you want. If you can reach your feet, please grab your heel or the ball of your foot and not the arch. We don't want to stretch out our arches. But now you can round over as much as you want. My low back is not having it today, so I'm just going to kind of stay here. But you go ahead, scratch the itch, fold as far as you can. <laughs> I know people get a little disappointed if they can't. One more round of breath. Leading with your head, push out and then rise up. Use the low back. Good. Now we're here. We're going to bend our knees, flatten our feet, and just roll on down. Take your time. Tee the arms out to the side. Pull your shoulder blades up underneath you. Very satisfying to lay down. So do your best not to look at the screen now and just listen to the verbal cues that I give because I don't want to tweak your neck now that we've worked so hard to soften it up. So on your next inhale, you're going to cross your right leg over your left. Scooch just your hips a couple inches to the right. And exhale, fold your legs over to the left. And you're going to have to pull your left hip up underneath you and move your arms and legs around a little bit so you can get settled to a place where you're not doing any work. Your right shoulder will come off the mat a bit, that's fine. My right leg is still hooked under my left, and if my foot doesn't reach the floor, this is the time where you can put a pillow under there or a block and fill that space up with something so that you can release the tension in the low body. You want to be a dish rag that's been wrung in half and you're doing no work now. If you want to add on, you can let your head roll to the right now. That may be uncomfortable. Don't feel like you have to do it. I hardly ever do it. I'm not going to do it today. This is twist enough for me today. And now continue to breathe through the nose. Let's do a few more rounds of breath. And when we come out, we're going to come out nice and slow. So next exhale, unwind your feet. Rotate your knees up. Push into the bottoms of your feet to bring yourself back to the middle of the mat. Pull those shoulder blades under you again. 
Big inhale, cross the left leg over the right. Scooch just your hips a couple inches to the left. Exhale, fold your legs down to the right. Bring that right hip up underneath. My right foot is out behind me. My left leg is still wrapped around the outside of my right leg. And if there's any space between your left leg and the floor, just put a pillow in there. Put a block in there. It's fine. Try to get settled as best you can so you're not doing any work here. Because, again, you want to be a dish rag that's just been wrung out. And once you feel like you're pretty settled, you can let your head roll to the left. Continuing to breathe. Twists are awesome for digestive problems like IBS and gas and bloating. They literally massage your internal organs and put them back in the right place. They're also really good for spinal health, kind of resetting the spine. If there's only one pose you do every day, maybe this is the pose. I like to do two minutes on each side in the morning and then again at night. All right, one more round of breath. And then again, take your time. It's a big twist, so we're going to unwind the feet. Bring the knees towards the sky. Push into the bottoms of the feet to bring yourself back to the middle of the mat. And now we're going to go into Shavasana. Corpse pose. So make a big starfish with your body. You want the pelvis open and the armpits open because that's where your lymphs, your lymphs are, your lymph nodes, and we want those to be able to sort of like circulate now that we've worked so hard and moved everything around. The other option that a lot of my regulars like to do is their feet together and then support each knee with a block. I really only recommend that if you have a block because it can put a lot of stress on your hip joints and you want to be comfortable here. You want to like feel nothing. You want to just be a blob on the floor. So you stay in Shavasana. If you need to put your hoodie on, if you want to put your socks back on, you know, get comfortable. Maybe put an eye pillow on. And we're going to stay here for several minutes. So you're welcome to close your eyes. This is one I encourage you to, especially since you're in your home, own house, maybe it feels a little safer to do that. But we're just going to give ourselves permission to do nothing for a while, just to be still and quiet. So we so rarely do that anymore, but it's a really important part of self-care is to just allow ourselves permission to do nothing. And then self-care is something that we want to practice regularly, just like any other skill, so that when tough times like we're having right now, when those times come up, we're more equipped to take care of ourselves because it's something we're used to doing. And it's not like we have to stress ourselves out to try to relax <laughs> on top of being stressed out. You just want to just lay still and breathe. Trying not to worry about your phone, the sounds outside. If you get distracted, you're just a normal human being. Don't judge yourself. Just bring the mind back to the breath. Nice deep breathing through the nose.
maintaining your Shavasana pose. Let's start to bring some awareness back into the body. So maybe we wiggle our fingers and toes and make tiny circles with the wrists and ankles. In no hurry. So take the choice, the option that you like to come out of Shavasana, but take your time, no hurry, and just come up to whatever comfortable seated position you would like to do today for the last few minutes. And we'll return to that breathing that we did at the beginning so we're nice and tall using the diaphragm to fill the lungs completely exhale meter that air out as slow as you can this time let's try to make the exhales longer than the inhales if you would like to do the counted breathing you're welcome to do that now otherwise making the exhale longer than the inhale is good you'll be good So when you're ready, go ahead and flutter the eyes open. Thank you for coming to virtual yoga today. I really appreciate that you came here and that you continue to support me during all this interesting times, but namaste. I hope you have an excellent rest of your day.